Hi there, my name is Chris. I'm an application engineer for Man and Machine UK, and I'm going to demonstrate in this video how to take a legacy SolidWorks file that's been turned into a step file, how to take that file and bring it into Inventor so that it's usable. We're going to bring it into Inventor as just a single part. So the first thing I need to do is create a new drawing. And I need to check that my units of this drawing matches the units of the step file or the SOLIDWORKS file that the model was originally created in. Millimeters is OK, so I will continue. So now I need to import my step file. I will select other formats and specify step and this is the step file I want to, to import. As you can see my uh, import is happening in the background. We can see down here the job is in progress. Eventually I will get a link. I can click on that link and it will load my step file into my model as so. So I'll just move my model around and change the view type to conceptual just so I can see it a bit better. So as you can see this is a singular block. If I brought this into Inventor this block would be a bunch of surfaces. These surfaces won't be tightly stitched together, they will not be watertight. It will be virtually impossible to turn this into a solid or a usable part within Inventor. So what I need to do is explode this solid and turn it into surfaces. From there I can thicken the surfaces which will make 3D objects. Once I've done that, I can save this file or export it again, maybe as an IGES or a step file again, whatever I prefer. And then I can use this file to import into Inventor, which will bring in a load of 3D solids to create up a singular part. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is explode the model. Now you can see we have several surfaces and some still blocks within it. So the first thing I need to do is create a new layer and call this 3D. And every time I create 3D solids I'm going to put them on this layer. So I'm going to do a quick select, select all my surfaces, and then I'm going to thicken these surfaces. I'm going to use 0.1 millimeters. This will turn all my surfaces into 3D objects, 0.1 millimeters thick. So once that is complete, I'm going to do another quick select. So that's all my 3D solids. Oops and move them onto the layer 3D. Once that is done, I'm going to turn this layer off. So now what I've got left are the objects that have not been converted yet. So again, I'm going to select all of these objects and then I'm going to explode. I'm going to repeat my last step, quick select, find all the surfaces, and thicken them, keeping 0.1 as the distance are thickened by. Once this is complete, I'm going to find all my 3D objects and place these onto my layer.
Okay, so all I'm left now is a bunch of faces, so to speak, like meshes. They're not surfaces, they're not blocks, and they're definitely not 3D objects. So I need to take these objects, meshes, and I need to convert them into a surface. Once they're surfaces, I can then thicken those surfaces. And turn them into 3D objects also. You can see now we have 3D objects on top of my meshes. So again, quick select, select 3D objects, and move those onto the layer 3D. So again we're left with these meshes. You could create another layer called meshes or you could just delete them. Okay. Now if we activate our 3D layer, we can see we have a model made up of 3D objects. We can then bring this into Inventor, turn it into a part and use it to model around and use the geometry. Okay, so we need to do an export. Call it what we like. Set the objects we want to export. and wait for the export to finish. Once we've done that, we go to Inventor and we open our, our IGES file. When I can find it. Here it is. Select IGES as a format. Now we get some options on how we're going to create our inventor part. We can decide what the units are, maybe millimeters just to be safe. And we can decide what we're going to import by loading model. This will give us a view as to all the solid bodies within this IGES file. Once that's loaded, you can see that we have quite an extensive list of solid bodies. This is just due to the size of the, the model that I'm working with here. We click OK, and there's our part. Okay. 
If we look at the browser, we can see here all the solid bodies that it has created in that part. And that is it. We can then save this. And once we've saved it, we can start a new assembly. And we can place our existing part into our assembly. And there we have it, a solid model created from a step file which came from a legacy version of SOLIDWORKS. Thank you very much for your time, bye.